Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It is Friday, and that means it is time for another Obscurity in Literature. And today we have a book that I stumbled upon, totally random, and I was more than happy to take it off the bookstore's hands, obviously, because it's right here in front of us, and that is Yoshitaka Amano's Maten. So, this is a big book. It's about, mm, I'd say, 14, 15 inches tall by about 9 inches or so, just judging by the squares on the table, unless somebody wants to really sit there and measure it out, because I'm not going to. But anyway, my attraction to this book, as you guys have probably seen and heard on this channel before, number one, grew up with the Final Fantasy games, and always loved, number two, Amino's Art, and Vampire Hunter D, I guess, would be the quick third behind them. Uh, a very influential piece of cinema that blew my mind at a very young age. Now, this is crazy because it actually has the original card still in here. And <laughs> Check out that copyright date. 1984. My God, he's young. I'm so used to seeing him with, like, gray, gray hair. This is a few years ago. Helps when he's on camera there. So this is pre-Final Fantasy, and that's the kind of cool thing about this book, and it was expensive even when it came out at a cover price of 2,500 yen. I love this cover too. That gold and just the intricate little details immediately makes me think of Gustav Klimt. And I don't know if that's intentional. It could be. I mean, obviously, Amano was always a big fan of fine art. And a lot of that carried through in his composition work, I feel. But the thing about him is he didn't exist in a vacuum prior to Square picking him up to do the illustrations for Final Fantasy. He was an established artist by that point already. And one of the things I love about this book... So when I got this, I actually came across two Amano books at the time. We were at a random book off near my in-laws... And as I mentioned, my last trip in Japan, I had an awful time finding any models regularly. I mean, I did come home with a couple. Maybe I'll do a video on them if I haven't already yet, or if anybody really cares. For some reason, not as many people are interested in the models, but that's something I love, and I'm just going to keep posting it anyway, because there's some cool stuff out there. Anyway, ended up on these two books, one being this, and then a smaller hardcover from around the same time, maybe a little later, but was predominantly focused on a lot of his black and white artwork. So we have like this little short story in here, and then I try to talk my family into trying to translate for me, and of course nobody wanted to cooperate, and it's too long, so I just gave up. But one of the things is, I, I mean, for as much work of his as I've seen, a lot of this is completely unfamiliar territory for me. So that was really cool. These big, long archways make me immediately feel like, you know, 70s, early 80s, like, what's his name, like, Roger Dean or Zeleny, a lot of those kind of record album, cover art, prog rock type stuff. So the reason I went with this book is, besides being a little bit larger than the other one, is it had an interesting mixture of both color and black and white art and we'll get to some of that and it's interesting to see stuff that just isn't you know video game related now of course we've got some absolutely gorgeous vampire hunter d stuff in here and this is going to make me have to dig out my old dark horse book and i think that was like one of the very first obscurities and literature videos i might have published or maybe i'm just misremembering things and i never did it and i don't even know i feel like i have What's interesting also about a lot of this is oh, there's a ton of Michael Moorcock artwork. So here we have like an old Eternal Warrior or Eternal Champion stuff. Ericose, I believe. Some kind of a witch. Witch from somewhere or other. This piece I've always enjoyed. This was the background of my computer screen for a long time at work. I have a bad habit, especially with, during the COVID era. Uh, on a weekly basis, and everybody would always wonder, I was always constantly putting new artwork up for my, my Zoom backgrounds, and, and so a lot of Amino work ended up in there. But this, I've always loved this painting. 
just the detail and I mean the, the clean line work and color work that you can see there. I can't think of the artist's name, but this piece always reminded me, feel, felt like the inspiration for the uh, Romancing Saga artist. Some kind of a puzzle. Hmm. But very, even for what I want to consider like classic era fantasy, it doesn't fit a lot of the typical norms. Yeah, we've got some knights, but I mean, already we've got like the big spiraling arching horns and, you know, elaborate ornate armor. Something that, I mean, he was a major influence on everybody that followed. I wonder if this is the one that the second movie is from. I wonder if this is the artwork for the, whatever, whichever book was the second Vampire Hunter D movie. Bloodlust. Whole section on fairies. Olivia Ledro would be quite pleased to see these. Ooh, Corum. Yeah, we are back in Moorcock territory here. I want to say there are some actual Elric ones, but here's something really interesting is we get some actual sci-fi stuff. What would be really neat is if this had some of his Tatsunoko work, but that just isn't happening. Twilight Saga. SF Adventure. So these are just like random spot illustrations from various sci-fi magazines. And I feel like you can see some of those classic fantasy artists' influence in these pieces. I know I have that Vampire Hunter D book upstairs somewhere. Another Quorum illustration. Quorum was the one who lost his hand and his eye, right? I feel like it. I've, I've read a lot of the Moorcock stuff, but my memory is slipping. I feel like it is, though. The eye and the metal hand. I could speak my imagination there. Look at this Frazetta-like piece. Another corn illustration. It's got that neat blend of both, both Eastern and Western sensibilities. Man, it almost looks like a Deja Thoris here before that was the thing. In fact, I'd love to see a Japanese take on Bros's Martians. I love that this book just, it, there's such a wide variety of stuff on display here. And I'm not used to seeing this. I mean, I, I'm so used to kind of his loosey-goosey, you know, sketchy, breezy style that we often see with his later work. <laughs> Some kind of record cover. Twilight Saga Caron. Don't know. D. Armageddon. I'm assuming that's from one of the Vampire Hunter books. Then we get into a bunch of grayscale artwork. At least I'm assuming it's intentionally grayscale. Maybe it was color. I don't know. Hard to say. But man, you can see this guy's influence. 40 plus years later, I mean, I'm like still getting blown away and impressed by just what he was trying to do. Shades of Kefka. Before Kefka was a thing. Now, here's what the other book I was going to pick up was like. It had a lot more of this kind of stuff. And that looked like Guin Saga there for a second. A lot of these were originally spot illustrations in the Vampire Hunter D novels. And they're interesting novels. They've got some quite bizarre characters. Like the way he, this crosshatching and just the, the sketching. I don't know. This illustration has always made me think of like Bernie Wrights in that era 
those guys working at like the factory, whatever they called their group, Kaluta, Windsor Smith. That is absolutely supposed to be Gwyn Saga. I know that leopard headed warrior. A major, major influence on Kentaro Miura. Would later go on to write a little story called Berserk. Yeah, that book I found had most of this stuff in full page illustrations. I mean, you can almost feel the Frazetta influence in this stuff. The pose, the angles. I like this one especially. It gives me shades of like Mignola. Miller doing their, you know, uh, use of white space. Definitely some interesting pieces. I don't know, it's a shame this stuff, number one, doesn't stay in publication, but number two is really hard to get a hold of outside of, well, just anywhere these days. This is a rare book, and naturally, I went back to the bookstore that I found this at the next day, and it was gone, the accompanying volume that I found at that time. But just an absolutely gorgeous set of illustrations in this. I didn't even show you everything, unfortunately, but... You know any other books of his work, and especially stuff that is from before Final Fantasy, I honestly and truly suggest give it a look, especially if you can find it for a good price. I think I paid a whopping 700 yen for this one. <laughs> 700 yen. That's like maybe not even $5. I'm like, yeah, it's a little worn on the spine, but... That's the kind of find that I absolutely love going to those stores. If you have a book off near you that actually still carries Japanese editions, unfortunately, almost all the ones in Southern California around me do not carry Japanese books much anymore, which is really sad. I'm, I'm quite thankful for the fact that that was not the case when my kids were, you know, growing up and learning to read and being in school because we took full advantage of it back when the books were actually a dollar like they are in Japan, where they're mostly 100 yen. But, you know, if you're in Japan, you happen to find any of those used bookstores, like Book Off, uh, what was the other one, Sugu, Suguta or something like that. Uh, there's another big rival company that does similar style stuff. By all means, if you know what you're looking for, go take a look. Check out places like Mandarake. <laughs> Mandarake, you got to be careful. Uh, where you're searching because things get questionable very quickly. And we'll, we'll take a look at some stuff that we picked up at Mandarake as well. But yeah, I'm absolutely in love with this book. And if you ever see copies, I say go for it. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. And with that said then, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching. And we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.